gather a clip of Oxford students' experience around body, body image. So, you, I, mean, I don't know if you're around next year. Yeah. Thursday, 7 30, you leave for lunch. Okay. So, and it has to be this Then I brought the. <laughs> so, what is normal eating? 75% of all American women have reported some form of kind of disordered eating on a regular basis. Now, this doesn't mean that it's, they have an eating disorder. And I think that's one thing to kind of get out of the way right away. As we start going through this, when I'm saying disordered eating, that's not necessarily an eating disorder. So, what is normal eating? I keep saying normal eating, getting back to normal eating. What is that? So, normal eating is eating in response to hunger, stopping when you're satisfied, well balanced, moderate, varied, flexible, and is actually enjoyable. It's not only talking about when and what to eat. Normal eating is not thinking about what you're going to eat at your next meal when you just finished one. Normal eating is not going to bed thinking about what you're going to eat for breakfast. Um, control. You don't have to control your normal eating. You don't have to use willpower to eat normally. Uh, restraint. It's not, you don't feel guilt about what you just ate. You're not thinking, oh my gosh, I just ate that for lunch for the next hour and a half. Uh, and it's not the focus here day. If you give a kid a cookie and they're not hungry, they're not going to finish all of it. It could be their favorite thing in the entire world. They'll eat most of it, even if they're not hungry, they're not going to finish it. And they're not going to finish it and then go back for more. So, dysfunctional eating is separated from the normal function of satisfying hunger, providing energy for health, growth, well-being, and instead to seek the reshape of the body or to relieve stress. Uh, it's not regulated by hunger or satiety, but inappropriate internal and external controls, such as emotion or willpower. So we're going to kind of talk a lot about kind of how do our emotions really affect what we eat. Uh, it simplistically, it comes down to two types of hunger cues. You have your physical hunger cues, which is your stomach growling, your energy dropping, things like that. And you have your psychological hunger cues, okay? Things such as anger, depression, fear, um, procrastination is one too. I mean, how many people, I did this all the time in college, you'd be studying, and then you find yourself in the kitchen, and you're like, what am I doing? I'm not hungry, but you don't want to be doing your homework. So you're <coughs> it's the same issue. Overeating is just as much of a dysfunctional um, eating pattern as undereating, okay? Our society has some pretty big judgments on one versus the other. The average person sees 400 to 600 ads a day. Uh, most of these are, I mean, a big proportion are aimed towards beauty, towards how can you change yourself to look better? How can you change yourself? How can you lose weight, gain weight, anything that you need to do? Um, just look at that woman's world, you know, <laughs> yummy chocolate multi cake recipes, but then they're also talking about gastric bypass on the next page. Like, you know, have you ever picked up a magazine where it's like, how to love your body, and then the next, the next section is like, how to lose 20 pounds in three weeks, okay? Such contradictory messages constantly in the media. So. Okay, so the first one I want you just to open up quickly, put it in your mouth and chew it up. Chew it, don't suck on it. Some type of judgment on what you ate. Uh, 
So those kind of things have kind of done that. Restaurants um, really promote value. This whole thing kind of started with when McDonald's came up with the value meal, they could, they could provide all of this food for a smaller percent, smaller cost. Uh, as Americans, I think we all know, you go to a restaurant and you're going to go somewhere that, you know, it's not that expensive and you get enough food. Where then when you go, you might eat, you know, had you only been hungry for about a quarter of that plate, you're probably going to eat at least half, if not all of it. Okay, because you paid for it, you're not going to... Did anybody here still, we're kind of starting to get out of that generation of clean your plate club. Did anybody still grow up kind of with that mentality? Okay, so there are some people here where... You know, you weren't getting out of, up off the table until you finished that food, okay? It really starts to kind of instill in that mindset. And we, as dietitians, we're really trying to train parents away from that because um, that's just one more thing that really kind of takes away our own ability to figure out when we're hungry and when we're full. Um, also, using food as consolation or a reward. Um, a lot of parents will say, you know, you can't have your dessert until you finish your dinner or you didn't clean your room today, so you can't have candy bar, or you did well on a test, so let's go up and get ice cream. Um, so this, 20 years ago, was the size of a hamburger that you get at a normal restaurant, normal fast food place. And now it's much bigger, okay? Think through, okay, if you go to a restaurant, if you go, say, to McDonald's, okay, uh, if they <laughs> change their size of the hamburger, do you think that you would eat the same amount or do you think you would eat less accordingly to it being a little bit bigger? A lot of people show as they do that, they end up eating the same kind of portion of it that they would have even if it was smaller. Okay? Um, the food industry gives us so much control. <laughs> control. I mean, they kind of provide what the food is, and then it's up to us as to how much to eat of it. Okay? A lot of times we don't actually stop and pay attention to that, pay attention to how much control we have. We just assume, well, this is a hamburger, this is what they gave me. As you'll see, obesity trends kind of, you know, definitely on the rise ever since um, we started kind of all of this. It just keeps on rising. Okay. And it's not because of, you know, the typical things that the media will portray it to be, because we're not listening to what our bodies actually need. Um, don't discount your influence on preventing eating disorders. You definitely can intervene. The earlier you catch something, even in yourself or in a friend, the better prognosis is for them to recover, okay? Um, it can be really uncomfortable to say something to somebody, it can be really hard, but honestly, like, if you say something, even if they get upset, because they will, they'll get mad, they'll tell you you're crazy, they'll tell you you're nuts, they don't need help, they're still hearing it, okay? So, if you are concerned about somebody saying something, even if they get mad, it's still helpful.